Welcome to Electro Online. Here before us, we have the very same problem we did on the previous video. We have a YY circuit. You notice that the load is not balanced. And in the previous video, we found the two loop equations where we added up all the voltage rises and drops around the two loops and found the two equations right here. Now, what we're going to do instead to solve this is we're going to use the determinant method. In other words, we're going to take these two equations, which have the two unknown variables I1 and I2, and we're going to solve that using this method right here. We're going to put it into the determinant method where we have this matrix times this matrix equals that matrix. So the determinant is first figuring out what this is equal to, which means we're going to multiply these two. Remember that these are the coefficients of I1 and I2, so that's why we need to multiply this out to find out what the values of this determinant. So we multiply these two terms right here and subtract the product of these two. So we have 10 plus J5 multiplied times minus 10 times J10. Those these two cross elements multiplied together minus these two cross elements multiplied together. Notice that this minus cancels out. That minus gives us 100. Multiplying this together gives us these values right here converted that to the determinant, it's equal to minus 50 plus J50 or 70.7 with a phase angle of 135 degrees. The next thing we do is we find what we call D1 by taking these elements and putting them right here and then calculating this matrix again. So when we look over here, we replace the first front two elements by these two values right here. And then again, that becomes determinant one associated with I1 we multiply these two terms together and subtract when multiply these two terms together. So we have this multiplied times this converted to the magnitude and phase angle format minus this times this, which is a minus 10 times 207.85 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. We can replace this with a plus when we replace this with a plus to make it a little bit easier. And then when we simplify that, we get 4015 with a phase angle of 135 degrees for D1. We do it again by taking these two values and substituting these two by these two right here in our second matrix called D2. So notice the two back elements now become this instead of what we had over here. And again, we're multiplying the cross elements together and subtract them and multiply these two elements together. So this becomes 11.818 with a phase angle of 26.57. We multiply that times 207.85 with a phase angle of 90, and subtract, we multiply these two together, notice this becomes 10 with a phase angle of 0. We multiply this together, simplified it becomes 3023.7 with a phase angle of minus 200.18. Now to find the two currents I1 and I2, I1 is defined by D1 divided by D, and I2 is defined as D2 divided by D. When we simplify that, we take 4015 with a phase angle 135 and divide it by 70.7 with a phase angle 135. We get the current for I1 of 56.79. If we do the same for I2, notice we take 3023 with a phase angle of minus 200.18 divided by 70.7 with a phase angle 135, and we get the current I2. And finally, to find the line currents IA, IB, and IC, we use the following relationship that IA is equal to I1. IB is equal to, notice, it's in the same direction as I2, but in the opposite direction of I1. So this becomes I2 minus I1. And finally, IC is equal to, and notice that IC is in the opposite direction as I2, so it would be equal to a minus I2 to get the three line currents. And that is how we use the second method, determinants. Typically, it's easier to use determinants, especially when you have a computer program just to dump them into, and you don't have to go through all the arithmetic like we did in the previous example. But you do see we have the algebraic example in the previous video, and we have the determinant example in this video showing you how to solve the exact same problem in two different ways. And that is how it's done.